removed almost all of the ports. One thing I'm worried about is I let my uh, I went a little too far with the Dremel here. Got into the board. I hope it still works. I tested it just before I did that. I've been doing a lot of work to the white case. It's nowhere near finished, but it's a lot further along than it was in my last update. The first thing I took the polymer from the LCD, which originally came in this. You might recognize it from Amazon. Here's the actual LCD. This one is broken. It was sent to me broken, and they're sending a replacement. Hopefully that goes well. The control board for it is actually very nice and thin. There are no real problems with it. There's no controls or anything, so I hope it outputs a picture I like from the start. The input, it's got video 1, video 2, and then it's supposed to be for a 12 volt, but as I see up here, it's got an LM regulator that says it's 3.3. I don't know if that's for the LCD as well as the LED backlight, or just the LED backlight. I wager it's just the LED backlight. I'm gonna have to do some experimentation to find out. The latest on this case, as you can see, I've got the inside pretty much finished routing out. I need to do filler on the uh, original posts there. And I got the network port actually situated. It's in its final position at least for the prototype which is in this white case. I actually want to put all of the ports up here coming out of this so that they can come out the top and be out of the way and the cables plugs will most of the mass will be here so it will be out of the way as well. As you can see it's actually coming along quite nicely except for the mistakes which I'm pretty sure you can probably see a few of them. I still need to shave off the hot glue that I used to uh, put the battery panel in. I'm going to have to paint the inside once I've finished covering all of the holes from the original mounting braces. Uh, I had to shave the sides of the board in order to get it to fit right here. It's a very tight fit, but that allows the DVI port to come out here without having to re rewire the port. I want to put a couple of USB slots on e or ports on either side of this. Hopefully there's enough space. It sure seems like there will be. The USB network adapter was one of those USB 1.1 to 100 megabit per second, which will be fast enough for wired Ethernet for me until I find an inexpensive and small USB 2 10100 card. There was no space for the adapter over here. I do want to run this thing in maximum overclock mode, so I got this heat sink. I uh, use my Dremel to uh, cut out the pieces that would otherwise interfere with a couple of the SMD components. And I am not a fan of what they call frag tape, the stuff that this normally comes with. A new one is over here. It's got, yeah, it's just double sticky tape that's supposedly uh, good at thermal interfacing. I would much rather use something called uh, thermal epoxy made by uh, Arctic Silver Company, uh, Arctic Alum Alumina Thermal Epoxy. As for the hub, you've seen pictures, you've probably seen pictures of those octopus hubs. They come with this port on one end and the opposite of this port on the other end. This particular one is a seven port. As you can see, there are basically enough for four times seven conductors here, which means seven USB ports. Here's the input. It did not have an LED on it by default. This LED is actually the original one from the Game Boy. I am going to make it so that it is still shining, but it'll be in a different place because the LCD is too big, obviously. I have already wired in 
the DC plug. I've already tested this and then pulled it apart to do further modding. It all works with this hub feeding power into the Model A. This is my Wi-Fi card. I wanted one that was better than those super mini ones, but was still small, and it has a couple of LED activity indicators. This is the original before being removed. As you can see, it has a WPS easy setup button. I popped that off of the board because I don't ever use that. But these I.O. gear adapters here, which use the standard Realtek chip, are actually really good BGN adapters, 300 megabit per second. The SD card adapter was actually pulled off of this on purpose because I actually want to be able to pop in and pop out a different SD card in this whenever I want without opening it. And this particular device is from Adafruit.com. It is their low profile SD to micro SD adapter. As you can see, I've got a SanDisk 8 gig, which already has Adafruit Occidentalist 0.2, I believe, on it. It was a cheap knockoff version of this, a USB Gravis Gamepad Pro, which might look familiar to you if you're a gamer. This is basically the PlayStation 1 controller in a USB version. I've found places that sell knockoff versions of this Gravis for two to three dollars online and that is where I got this from. As you can see, I busted off part of it. I'm hoping to be able to solder to here. And as you can see, it's one of these gob ones, the chip directly on the board, and then a gob of epoxy. This should be able to fit. I've tested it before. I've used it in another project. It does work, but I'm not sure I'm gonna end up using it. I might get a teensy for this. As you can see here, I still haven't cut into the original black Game Boy. This is going to be the final version once I learn everything from the original one. The prototype is where I hope to make all of my mistakes. Before I had decided on the original Game Boy, I thought about a lot of different alternatives, such as the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Advance, and even a basic project enclosure. None of these really gave me enough space the type of controls I wanted, and some style. Sure, the project enclosure had enough space, but I mean, seriously, if you want to put something in this, it's going to be boring and dull. And, as you can see, it is nearly the same volume as the original Game Boy. Those octopus hubs, as you see, this is a tiny circuit board. It's a very regular shape, so it's going to be easy to place. And the performance out of it is actually really good wireless keyboard mouse. This is one of those re-minis. It works great. The black Game Boy actually worked when I bought it and I paid $35 for it. And this is all the insides. So I'm going to keep it. Hopefully I'll find a Game Boy that is broken that I can put these in because I hate wasting good parts.